<clears throat> Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the uh, run through for the past paper three. As ever, remember at the front of your paper you have all of these um, equations, so if you've got a, um, a question where you've got to utilise numbers, uh, specifically in the physics section, then make sure you look at this page. So, first the biology section. So it says malaria is a disease caused, caused by a protozoan called plasmodium. Plasmodium is transmitted by mosquitoes. Describe how mosquitoes transmit plasmodium between humans. What we've got to say here is that um, the mosquito will bite a person. All we've got to put is that it will bite a person. You can say pierce or inject, um, and then um, it get the plasmodium gets in via the blood. So as long as you say it bites a person, it gets into the blood, then that's, uh, that's those two marks. And it says, one way of preventing the spread of malaria is by drinking... Uh, by draining swamps. Explain why draining swamps can help. Um, so swamps is where the mosquitoes breed um, or where the eggs or larvae are found and you've just got to get the idea that that's, that's why draining the swamp will be important. So if you just said that's where mosquitoes breed or that's where the mosquitoes eggs or larvae are found then that's enough. You can't say, just say that it kills the mosquitoes or that the mosquitoes live in swamps. It's more about where they, they breed. Um, in the past, some people thought that malaria was caused by harmful gas from swamps. To protect themselves from malaria, people put nets around their beds to try to keep out the harmful gas. Using nets around beds reinforced the incorrect idea that malaria is caused by harmful gas. Explain why. And um, this the, re the reason is the first mark, you've got to say that um, they thought the nets were successful in stopping the gas. Um, or that you can say that the gas can get through the nets... Or you can say they did not know mosquitoes caused malaria uh, for the first mark. And the second mark, you've got the idea across that the nets stopped the mosquitoes from getting through. Um, if you put something like um, the reduction of malaria was put down to stopping the gas, but it was in fact stopping the, the, uh, the mosquito, then that will get you both marks. Next question. Mosquitoes use their sense of smell to detect humans. Mosquitoes detect the smell with receptors on their antennae. Complete the flow chart to show how a mosquito detects and responds to the smell of a human. Um, so, the first one, the stimulus here, is the smell of the person, but you can just put smell. And then the effector is the wings, or the wing muscles. So that's what you get, get those two marks for. One of the symptoms of malaria is fever. In a, in a fever, the body temperature may rise to over 40 degrees. How does the body monitor the rise in body temperature? Um, so you say the brain for the first mark, or you can say the hypothalamus if you are being smart. And uh, for the second mark, you're going to say it monitors the temperature of the blood. And the blood is the important uh, word there to get the mark. Uh, one way to cool down is by vasodilation. Explain how vasodilation cools the body. So two out of any of those three, these three points, you can say that blood flows close to the surface of the of the skin. That's one mark. You don't have to say skin; you just say blood flows close to the surface. Um, second mark, you could say there's increased heat loss or just there's heat loss. And with the third mark, you could say how there's uh, heat loss by radiation or conduction or convection. Any of those three heat transfers you can use for that for for a, for a mark as well. So any two of those three points. Next question, female mammals have two X chromosomes, XX, and males have an X and Y chromosome, XY. This is not the same in all animals. In grasshoppers, females have two X chromosomes, but males just have one X chromosome and no Y chromosome. This is written as XO, um, O meaning no chromosome. Complete the genetic diagram to show the genotypes and phenotypes of the offspring of a pair of grasshoppers. Um, one box has been done for you. So all you've got to do is combine these with these for each of these. So you can have X and O in that one, you can have X and X in that one, and you can have X and O in that one. And then you've got to complete by putting male underneath here because it's got XO, male underneath here because it's got XO, and female underneath here because it's XX. Female grasshoppers have 24 chromosomes in each body cell. How many chromosomes are in a male grasshopper body cell? Um, so that's 23. And then how many chromosomes are in grasshopper sperm cells? Um, and you could say 11 or 12 for that mark. You get a mark for either of those numbers, or by putting both, if you wanted to. 
And his dad, Bob, has a lot of salt and saturated fat in his diet and is very overweight. Look at the BMI chart. There it is. BMI is calculated using the formula, that formula there. Uh, this, has been, this can be rearranged to give this formula here. Bob's height is 1.8 metres, his mass is 120 kilograms, his BMI is 37. Calculate the least mass he needs to lose to fall into the normal category. Um, so, the least mass he's going to have to lose is to get to this number here for normal, so 24.9, um, and that will get him into normal. So that is, means his BMI will equal 24.9. So this number here will equal 24.9. And you're going to times that by the height in metres squared. And that equals um, 80.7. So that's the minimum, sorry, the, um, the maximum mass he can be and still be in the normal category. So the minimum mass he needs to lose will be 120 minus 80.7. And that will equal 39.3. So... That is your answer there. So on to the chemistry section. It says, uh, this, this one question is about fuels. Crude oil is a fossil fuel. Crude oil is being used at faster than it's being made. Write about the problems this will cause in the future. So there's only two marks here. So any two from these uh, five points. First, you could say that all the readily extractable resource will be used up in the future. Or all the coal or oil or fossil fuels will run out or be used up. Second mark, you could say we'll have to find replacements. Uh, you could say that there's um, not enough fuel to power vehicles or homes or make electricity. You could say that there would be a conflict between making petrochemicals or fuels. Um, and you can also make the point that you, the, the UK is dependent on oil and gas from politically unstable countries. Or you could say that crude oil become very expensive. Next one, crude oil is separated into many fractions by fractional distillation. The, fract the diagram shows a fractionating column. Look at the table of uh, boiling point ranges for some of the fractions. Write down the name of the fraction which exits from the bottom of the fractionating column, and that is bitumen. That's because um, it's hot at the bottom of the fractionating column and cold at the top, so the one with the highest boiling point is going to come off at the bottom. That's bitumen. Uh, next question, LPG contains propane and butane, right, the molecular form of butane. So here's butane, molecular form is, you say how many carbons, how many hydrogens there are, so one, two, three, four carbons, so that's C4, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens, so H10. You must make sure that these numbers are little and lower than the capital letters. You can write those in either order, so you can say H10C4 if you wanted to and still get the mark. Look at the displayed formulas of propane and butane. Propane and butane are hydrocarbons, they're also alkanes. Explain why they're both hydrocarbons and alkanes. So first thing, let's do a hydrocarbon. So you've got to say that they only they contain hydrogen and carbon, that's your first mark, and only for the second mark. And then for the alkanes bit, you can say that they only have single bonds. So hydrogen and carbon only and then only contain single bonds for all three marks. Next question, Jill um, wants to buy a sports jacket that she can wear in all weathers. Uh, look at the information about polymers A, B, C, D and E. Uh, which polymer would be best for making Jill's sports jacket? Explain your choice. Um, so. C would be the choice, but that won't get you a mark. And you need to say, for, for two marks, you've got to list all three properties why it, why it would be your best choice. So you've got to say it's flexible, it's waterproof, and it's breathable. And that will get you both marks there. Look at the displayed formula for ethene. Why is ethene described as unsaturated? And that's simply because it contains double bond. So that's all we need to say there. Bromine water is used to test for an alkene. Ethene decolorizes bromine water. What type of reaction is this? That's known as an addition reaction. Won't, you can't have anything else, just addition. And what type of compound is formless reaction? And that's a dibromo compound. Um, you could also say a saturated compound if you wanted to for that mark. 
And then polyethene is used to make plastic bags. Draw a displayed formula of polyethene. Now to draw a displayed formula of polymers, all you got to do is draw the two C's that is in the monomer, the alkene, but without the double bond. That double bond breaks and goes either side. Draw brackets around those two bonds, and then draw just whatever's on the molecule to begin with. That's four H's. And then you need an N there to get the second mark. So two marks for that. Next question says so this question is about foods. Mayonnaise is made by mixing oil, water, and egg yolk. Egg yolk acts as an emulsifier and stops oil water from separating. Look at the diagram shows the molecule of an emulsifier. To a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. Explain how the emulsifier stops oil and water from separating. So all you got to say is the hydrophilic end bonds to a water molecule, and the hydrophobic end bonds to an oil molecule. Instead of saying bonds, you could also say attracted to, or it sticks to, or joins to. And then, next question, when eggs are cooked, a chemical change happens. Uh, explain why the texture of the egg changes during the chemical change. Um, so you could say the protein is denatured, or the protein is destroyed, or you could say the um, shape of the protein changes. For that mark. And then baking powder is used to make cakes rise. Baking powder contains sodium hydrogen carbonate. Sodium hydrogen carbonate decomposes when heated. Write the balance symbol equation. So firstly, you need to know the, um, the formula for sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is NaHCO3. And that will break down to make sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, plus water, plus carbon dioxide, which is what makes the cake rise. And to balance that, you need two sodium hydrogen carbonates. Maybe worth learning that equation because that is a specific one that comes up in C1. You get one mark for the formulae and one mark for that two. So last section is a physics section. So surfers use water waves on the sea to move fast. Look at the diagram of the water waves on the sea. The surfer travels at the same speed as the water waves. The water waves have a frequency of 0.25 hertz. Use information diagram to add the wavelength of the waves and calculate the speed of the surfer. So look back at your equations. You'll find that wave speed equals wavelength times the frequency. In this case, the wavelength of two waves is 40. Therefore, the wavelength of one is 20. So it's going to be 20, which is the wavelength times the frequency, which is 0.25. So that gives you 5 meters per second. And that gives you two marks. And then the next question says, Dave experiments diff using uh, Dave experiments heating different materials. He needs to choose a heater to warm some water. The table shows how much energy to heat different heat supply in 600 seconds. Dave needs to increase the temperature of 0.6 grams of water by 12 degrees in 600 seconds. Do a calculation to find out which heater Dave needs. And remember, energy given out will equal the mass times the specific heat capacity times the temperature change. So in this case, the mass is 0.6. The specific heat capacity is 4,200, and the temperature rise is 12. So the amount of energy given out is 30,240 joules, and therefore E is needed, because D will not give out enough energy to heat the water that much. The next question says, Dave's teacher gives him two different liquids to boil. They have different specific latent heats. Unfortunately, he gets the two liquids confused. He cannot tell which liquid is which. He heats up both liquids until they start to boil. Dave then measures how much mass is lost from each liquid when he heats them for the same time. Look at his results. Use a calculation to show which liquid is water. Um, now, remember, the um, energy needed um, equals the specific latent heat times the mass. So in this case, if we want to work out the specific latent heat, that's going to be the energy divided by the mass. So we do the first one, A, 48,000 divided by 20. That equals 2,260. And therefore that one, if we look back at our latent heat, is water. So therefore A is water. Now obviously if you did the other one, then that would give you um, ethanol instead. When liquids boil, energy is transferred, but there's no temperature change. Right now, the name of another process in which this happens. So any other states change, so say melting or freezing or solidification, 
um, or you could say condensation or sublimation, which is solid into a gas. Basically anything but boiling. And then the ozone layer protects from harmful UV radiation. This radiation can cause health problems. Data on ozone concentration in parts per million displayed using deciles. Look at the graph of ozone concentration in the USA from 1980 to 2009. Data was collected from 255 different sites. Use data from the graph to describe the trends in data from 1980 to 2009. Um, so any of these two, so you can say that um, for Mark you said there's a reduction in ozone um, but if you say there was a 30% reduction that would score both marks uh, you could say that 10% stays relatively level for a mark but if you said that 90% falls more quickly than 10% that would get you both marks and it says the Antarctic ozone hole was discovered in 1985 by British scientists this led to changes in people's behaviour across many countries. Describe and explain these changes. So the use of CFCs was reduced, or we could say that fridges or aerosols or deodorants, propellants changed. Um, you could say that people were more careful in the sun, or people used more sun lotion or sunblock. Um, and you could also say for a mark that more scientific measurements were taken from that time to see what happened to the ozone layer afterwards. Next question says, skin cancers have increased since 1984. Sometimes th scientists think this is due to the depletion of the ozone layer. Other scientists think that there may be other factors involved. Suggesting another factor which could lead to the increase in skin cancer. Um, so you could say that there's more sunbed use, or more people using sunbeds, or people spend more time in the sun, or you could say people aren't using enough sunblock, or you could say that more people are visiting hot countries. It said, people from hot countries in India have a lower risk of skin cancer. Explain how darker skin can reduce skin cancer risk. Um, so first thing is to say that um, that UV radiation, if you, if you identified that UV radiation uh, causes skin cancer, that's one mark. And you could say that's absorbed for the second mark um, and less radiation reaches the, the uh, underlying skin for a mark as well. If you say anything about melanin, that doesn't get you a mark. It's more about the fact that UV radiation is absorbed by the upper layers of the skin and therefore it can't penetrate further down into the skin. The last, qu last question says, analog digital signals are used for communications. Analog radios have been used for many years. DAB radios have become more popular. They use digital signals. Each analog radio station in a town must broadcast at a different frequency. Several DAB radio stations in the town can broadcast at the same frequency. Explain why the DAB radio stations do not need to broadcast at different frequencies. There's two marks for this. So you can say that for the first mark, DAB uses multiplexing. And the second mark, that means that signals are separated or the signals don't interfere. You could also say there's less or no interference. Digital analog signals become weaker the further they travel and therefore need to be amplified. Explain why the amplified signals remain high quality for digital signals but decrease in quality, quality for analog signals. Um, so the first mark is saying that signals pick up noise, so the word noise is important there. And then the second mark you can say either the noise is amplified for the analog signal or you could say that it's filtered out for the digital signal. And final question, Mike has a TV which is controlled using a remote control handset. On the handset, each button controls a different function on the TV. Explain how each button controls a different function. Um, so for, you can say either that each button sends out a different signal or a different code, um, or you can say that each function on the TV needs a different sig digital signal or a different code to activate it. So that's the end of this paper. So make sure you get the next paper from your teacher before you leave and also the answer to the six-mark questions, uh, which you can also get from your teacher before you leave.